Hi all, this is just a short video to introduce the topic of synchronous machines, which is the next topic on electrical services plant two. So very briefly, this is just gonna give a quick introduction and overview to what these machines are, a basic look at their constructions and types, and some specifics on synchronous motors. Following this video, I've provided two short videos that will outline the working principle of synchronous generators and motors, which I suggest you view after viewing this video. So these machines, synchronous machines, are similar to induction machines, which we've worked on for the last few weeks. Their construction is very similar in that they have a rotating and a stationary part. But the big difference is that these machines are designed to run at a constant speed, which is the synchronous speed, which can be calculated with the formula NS is equal to 60 times F over P. So F is our supply frequency and P is the number of poles, number of pairs of poles in the machine's stator. And this will calculate it as RPM. So with an induction machine, we knew that the machine experienced slip, which means its rotor was slower than the synchronous speed. But for these generators and motors, it will operate at synchronous speed. So if it's a four pole machine with 50 hertz supply, we're expecting it to operate at 1500 RPM. The main use for these machines is generators of electrical power. So we'll find them in the likes of um, generating stations with large turbines powered by either burning gas or coal to generate steam. And then the steam turbine drives these generators and also in nuclear generating plants. So that's what they're mainly used for, but they also find suitable applications for everyone who need motors with constant speed. Now, while constant speed can be a disadvantage in certain industries, these motors also have the big advantage in that they can be used as a motor with a leading or lagging power factor. So that essentially means we can use it as a power factor correction tool as well with variable amounts of power factor correction. They're, as I mentioned, they're similar to induction machines in that they have a stator and rotating part. So we can see here two typical types are what we call a round or cylindrical rotor or non-salient, where we have the ring, which is the stator, and the rotor here, rotating in the middle, and with the salient one here. So they're different types of rotors, basically. The stator contains the windings, and the stator is sometimes called the armature while our rotor contains our field, which produces our magnetic flux. So our stator's windings are connected to our three-phase AC supply, while our rotor tends to be connected to a fixed DC supply to provide our magnetic flux. If you were to compare the two, our rotor with a cylindrical or non-salient type tends to be used for high-speed applications, low number of poles, and in the power ratings of anywhere from 100 to 1500 megawatts, so for generating stations, whereas low-speed applications use the salient rotor, and these tend to be 40 to 50 pole machines and anywhere from 0.5 to 5 megawatts. But these are just general values they can change depending on the application. And briefly on synchronous motors. So as I said, these have to run at synchronous speed. So they're not self-starting. So with an induction motor, we were able to bring up the speed slowly using a soft start or a star delta start, or even direct online for small motors. But we can't do that with synchronous motors. And we'll see that if we try that, that the motor will just vibrate and not start. So for that reason, there's different starting methods we can use such as an auxiliary motor to start the motor up to near synchronous speed, or use a variable frequency supply, which will allow us then to increase the frequency and the speed up from a low value. Or finally, with certain rotor types, we can have an additional auxiliary rotor, sorry, winding on the rotor and start it as an induction mean, machine, bring it up to speed and then attach it to its DC supply on the winding, and then it'll be working as a synchronous machine. So they are the basics of the synchronous machines that we're going to be looking at. So at this point, I just want to ask you to go and view the working principle videos that are available on Brightspace. Thank you very much.